Hey there, everybody. This is Sarah Russell with Ebb and Flow Yoga Teacher Training. We're working on our online 200 hour module, and we're just going to go through a really quick, basic tutorial on um, balancing postures, inversions, and twists. So, hopefully, you're already a little bit warmed up. If not, just be really careful going in and out of all this stuff. You can always do a couple of sun salutations to get ready and we're gonna go ahead and get started on our mat. So if you've got props, blocks are gonna be really great today. Um, you can also use a strap, that might be helpful for a posture too. And then um, we are gonna show a pose that we use the wall. And obviously with balancing postures, you can always use the wall as a prop. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just gonna start with basic seated twists right now just because I need to still warm up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna actually come off my bolster because it's just a little too big for me right now for where I'm at. But sitting up on a blanket here is gonna be really helpful. Um, so we're just gonna do a simple seated twist to start as we warm up. So legs can be crossed. You can have a um, be in half lotus as well, whatever feels good to you. Um, I just kind of like to cross my legs. Sometimes I'll switch it up. Usually at the beginning of my class when I'm teaching, I have my right leg in front, and when I close class, I have my left leg in front, and that's how I kind of remember to keep it even on both sides. Um, but remember, every time we move into a posture, we're going to create length and space. And I'm sorry, I have such an itch on my nose today. And we're going to have length and space first before we revolve the body. So when we're dealing with twists, it's always really important to get that lift and lengthening first. So we'll go ahead and move into um, our very first simple sitting twist, Bharad Vajasana. Inhale, reach the arms up nice and high. We're gonna take that left hand over to the right knee. The other hand acts as a kickstand back behind you. And I want you to think about how the spine is revolving all the way up from the hips and pelvis, and we bring it all the way up to the crown of the head. And so we need to make sure that we include that cervical spine in that twist. So looking all the way around as far as you can, inhale, create the length, exhale, twist, that's gonna be the common denominator with all these twisting postures today. Inhale, come back to center, up nice and long. Exhale, go ahead and twist the other way. We always wanna do everything on both sides. So when you're working on your class, the general rule of thumb, especially in our 200 hour training, I want you to remember that every time you do a twist, you're, gonna, um, you're going to always end with a symmetrical posture. So if this were the, excuse me, if this were the end of our practice, we would also do something asymmetrically, like maybe just hug the knees in or something. So let's go ahead and move on to our back. Um, one other thing what, that you can do when you're in these simple seated twists is also take the eyes all the way to the edge of the eye socket. See how far you can look behind you. And that's gonna be really good too. Um, one other variation for the legs before we lay down is starting on the knees and then just allowing the feet to fall to one side. And people get confused on this one sometimes because we tend to think we twist toward the feet. We're actually gonna inhale and twist away from the feet as you exhale. And that's gonna, that's gonna just give you a, a different variation of that twist. And this is definitely one of my favorites. So try and get away from that, that you want to just move right into the posture. Create the space, that nice elongation of the spine, space between the vertebrae, and then revolve the body. So coming down onto our backs, this one we often do maybe at the beginning or the end of our sequence. Uh, it's great for a warm up, but it can also be something to kind of draw you into your practice midway into the class. I'm gonna grab a quick drink of water. It's gonna be a hot, hot day. So from here, we're gonna roll down onto the mat. And for um, our, re our reclined spinal twist, we are focused on letting the body rest deeply into the mat. Soles of the feet are to the floor. There's a lot of variations for the legs here. There's two variations for the arms. They're either up at cactus or their palms face down out in that T position. And so if you've decided to do this, make sure those palms are face down and make sure those shoulders are really rooted down into the mat. I have been really liking the, T, the um, cactus arms most recently in my own practice. So we're gonna hollow the belly, push the low back to the floor. And then as we inhale, we're gonna pick the hips up, move them to the right and then let the knees fall to the left. Now we don't always hear this cue in class and that's simply because it's easier not to give it. Now you're probably not gonna hurt yourself or hurt your students if you don't give that cue, go ahead and switch sides whenever you want to. You're just gonna pick up those hips 
Exhale, push them to the other side and let the knees fall. So we give that cue because we're keeping the spine in a neutral alignment. When we just move from this center position and let our knees fall, everything moved over to this side. So my hips are no longer in alignment with the spine. So you might try that a couple of times, back and forth. Now the body's not really weight bearing, so you're probably not gonna do anything. But if somebody already has instability in their low back, it's gonna feel a lot better to push the hips in the opposite direction that you're dropping the knees. So the variation for the legs, you can always do this with just one leg. You can pull a leg in. I like to pick the hips up still, push them to the right, let my knee fall to the left. Now the eyes are always looking in the opposite direction of that leg. So also when we're twisting, notice it's real easy for that shoulder to come up. And so we wanna make sure both shoulders stay on the floor. More important for the shoulders to stay on the floor than for the knees to come all the way to the floor. So other variations, both legs can come up in a way. I'm still gonna focus on pushing my hips opposite of the direction of the legs and then letting the legs come down. Eyes are opposite of the leg. You can also just reach and grab hold of one leg. This lower leg can relax a little bit. So lots of fun stuff you can do with the legs for your students. So hopefully you're feeling like the spine is getting a little bit warmed up. And we'll move into some standing sequences. Nothing too crazy today. Oh, I've got one more seated posture. It's one of my faves. You might want your blanket. Um, it's Paragrita Janu Shirshasana. In Sanskrit, Paragrita means to revolve. So um, you might hear that term in Sanskrit, um, and that's what we're talking about, re uh, revolved pose. Any twisting pose is gonna have that. So we've got our blanket, and it can prop us up just a little bit here if you want it. If you're comfortable all the way down, you feel your spine in neutral and nice and long. You don't necessarily need it, especially for this posture, since one leg is gonna be in, and one leg is gonna be pressed out. So lots of variations for this one. For, this, for the purposes of this practice, we're gonna go ahead and have both legs out to start. We always wanna start in some sort of neutral alignment. So we're gonna start in our foundational posture, Dandasana, and then slowly bring that left foot into the inner thigh, and then we're gonna open up that right leg. Now, as I adjusted that right leg open, my foot might not be touching the thigh anymore, that's okay. Notice my body's still facing forward towards you. Now we create the length, inhale, reach up, exhale, I'm gonna to twist towards my bent knee, my other hand acts as a kickstand. Now it's really easy to lift that hip bone um, and so then the sit bone comes away from the floor. We wanna really focus on creating the length in the side rib and pushing that leg down. This foot's gonna stay active. So you might notice your students doing this a little bit. That's not what we're going for. We wanna create that same space and rooted grounding sensation in both sit bones. So as you twist, you can look back, make sure that that foot stays active, the inner thighs reaching to the floor. Now to take it another step further, that back hand can come up and away. This is kind of a three-step process. Now notice where it's a twisting posture. So the main goal is to continue to press the heart in this direction, but you might start to lean towards that extended leg. That arm can be up high. If you're feeling good there, you can go ahead and hook the elbow, if range of motion allows, into that inner thigh. Now there is a posture where we're just side reaching and it's a side bend, and that's totally okay. But for the purposes of this pose, it's a twist first and foremost, keeping that arm extended behind the ear, and then we slowly extend and reach. So what I always like to do is think about, there's a photo of BKS Iyengar, and he is laying with his spine elongated along that leg. And that's really what I want you to envision when you're in the posture and you're creating that space. So as flexibility permits, you can go ahead and reach down, grab that foot, but we're still focused on the twist. And so we're not, the end result is not to grab that foot. The end result is to stay revolved and open towards the sky. So go ahead and try that on both sides. We're gonna always reset, I almost didn't do it, right? Sitting up nice and tall, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hand to knee twist, other hands are kickstand. Check in, make sure that hip stays down, foot is active. Take that kickstand away. Now your students can always use a chroma progression and stay right here. So this might be as far as you want to teach, especially your beginner students, or maybe this is serving a practice that's a little bit more gentle. Then you can always take that hand off the floor. That's not a very easy task for someone who's not lifted up in their spine already. The last variation of that posture is right here, continuing to shift. My elbow is pushing into that inner thigh to reach an extent. 
So inhale, come out of the posture, exhale and release. So it's part of your Tajani Shirshasana, our revolved head to knee posture. We're gonna now move into those um, standing postures. So the only two standing postures that we're gonna focus on right now are going to be um, revolved extended side angle and revolved triangle pose. So revolved triangle and revolved extended side angle pose both come from the warrior two families. However, what I want you to remember is that every single standing twist posture is evolved from warrior one family. So that's really important. So remember that, that's part of the homework. Um, warrior one family is forward facing. Warrior two family is side facing, okay, where the hips are open. And we want the hips to stay closed in a neutral facing forward so that we can revolve and twist the spine. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if, um, if you're not super warmed up here, just be really careful. We don't need to go very deeply into these postures as we learn them. So we know that revolved extended side, I'm sorry, we know that extended side angle looks a little bit like this. So I think that um, we automatically think that must be how we get into the posture. But instead, I want you to start in warrior one, and you can always have a block nearby. I like to put it on the inside or the outside of my foot. You can always move it. So we're on railroad tracks like this, rather than warrior two position where we're on a tightrope. So we're in a nice, strong posture. That foot can be as far up or as far back as is comfortable for you to keep everything facing forward. As we inhale, we create that length. Now we keep the knee bent for this first posture. This is the revolved extended side angle. Notice my heel is down. There is a variation of this posture with the heel up, and that comes from the, that crescent lunge or that um, just the regular low lunge, and that's fine too. But I want you to know the mechanics of this posture right here. So keeping that heel down, elongating that back leg. Inhale, reach up high. And then what I find to be really helpful is to take that right hand to the hip if your right leg is forward, and then slowly begin to extend the left arm because we're creating that space first, right? You're gonna go ahead and reach down for that block, either on the inside or the outside of the foot, and then push into that block, and that's what's gonna give you leverage to revolve. Once you get into that block, the arm slowly reaches to the sky. I'll go ahead and do that facing you as well. So, Warrior one, right? Extend left hand to the hip. I'm sorry, I lied. I just did the same side. <laughs> it's morning here. I'm a little slow today. So with that left leg, why don't I face you so you can see it. Left leg forward. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my left hand to left hip. Extend and reach. Now I might have a block here. If I've got flexibility, I can get buoyancy from the earth and then slowly revolve. Now notice I'm not trying to take my hips off to the side. I want everything to still be in alignment facing forward so that I can slowly revolve and send my shoulder and arm up. So the palm is waving in the direction that you're looking. So this is very similar to triangle, the revolved triangle posture that we're gonna do next. Only triangle pose, we know it, to look like this, right? So from here, all we're gonna do is get into that warrior one position. My right leg is forward here. Inhale, straighten it up. I'm gonna take my right hand and my right hip, that's the leg that's in front. And then I'm gonna slowly extend forward. Good, now notice I didn't shift my hips. Everything's still facing forward. If you feel your hips shift, you can use this hand to call that hip back. You can also step that back foot in a little bit. Heel stays grounded. So as you reach and extend, that hand either comes to the floor, to the block on the outside or the inside. I'm just gonna leave it right here for me right now. Now I push into that floor or into my block for buoyancy to help me aid in my twist. If we don't have this lower hand grounded in any of these twists, I'm not gonna get the leverage I need to lift up. So inhale, begin to extend. Pay attention to the alignment, make sure the hips didn't shift. And you can try it on the other side as well. So, warrior one on that left leg, inhale it up, exhale, extend, that left hand comes to the hip, and then take the hand to the block or the floor. Reposition the body if you need to, create space and length through the vertebrae, and then that allow the body to revolve. Good, to come out of it, we exhale down, inhale back into that foundational pose of warrior one if you'd like, okay? So those are our twisting postures for this 
um, 200 hour training. They are not super involved in complex, but they can be a little bit of a challenge to teach because there's a lot of right brain, left brain, we're crossing over the body, and it can become particularly challenging for your students. So we're gonna move into our balancing postures right now. And balancing posture, we're gonna go ahead and move right into Eagle Pose, uh, Garudasana, because Eagle Pose is also another one that's gonna cross the body. I, today, am gonna be using my block. So I'm gonna have that nearby. I'm gonna actually put a block on both sides so that I can switch my feet pretty easily. Okay, so we've got Tadasana as our foundation, and we're gonna move through chair pose. I often hear this posture taught without moving through chair, and so people are with straight legs trying to move into the posture, and it becomes really challenging. So it's really important to create that buoyancy and let your students find their way into the earth and pick up that energy from the earth, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and balance my left foot first. From here, inhale into chair. So as you sit down, get nice and juicy with it. Good, focus on your alignment. If the arms are falling forward, go ahead and just bring the arms to the, to the hips. I still have a little bit of a shoulder injury, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So notice my big toes are together to touch. If I am out here with my legs, I'm gonna, it's gonna take a lot more movement in the trunk of my body to find that balance, right? So narrowing that push point into the earth, right? Inhale, pick up the right leg. Exhale, weave that leg around. Whoop. Good, and if you can tuck that foot around the calf, you can. Wingspan comes wide like an eagle here flying. And then slowly take that right arm underneath the left. Good. You can also take the foot to that block, sink a little deeper into it as you're working on the posture. I find that using the blocks when you're working into these postures is a really excellent way to find what the full pose feels like. Using the wall as a prop in any of these balances is wonderful too. Let's talk about the hands for a second. So with these hands, I have a bit of a shoulder injury, so bear with me. So if I'm in my chair pose, it's really easy to let the elbows collapse into the chest. We're gonna go ahead and extend the elbows forward, get a nice back bend sensation in the upper body. And then from here, hands pull away and up towards the sky. Okay, so we're creating space right back here. Let's go ahead and balance on the left foot this time, or I'm sorry, on the right foot this time. Inhale, chair, balance on the right. Find your focal point, all of these poses. We're gonna find our drishti. Inhale, lift up. Finding that drishti is just that focal point out in front of you. Left arm underneath the right right now. Good, I'm gonna go ahead and locate my block just because I'm a little unbalanced today. Lift the heart, sink down low. Inhale, rise up. Good, so that's a really fun one to work on. It's a really fun one to float in and out of warrior one with that front knee staying bent the whole time. So while we're standing, we're gonna go ahead and move right into dancer pose. So we have standing bow and dancer and I'm gonna be teaching dancer posture. You may recognize standing bow as more of a posture where you're more forward leaning and extending and this arm is out here rather than up and overhead. But dancer, I want you to think of that, you know, when you went to the Nutcracker as a kid and you watched that ballerina, ballerina pick up that foot from back behind. The, the um, strap comes in really handy. I'm gonna show you a little trick with your strap. So grab your strap. If you don't have a strap, just pay attention here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on my left foot first. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little sandal. So I'm gonna take this strap and put it behind, this is a really long strap, put it behind my heel. And then I'm gonna create a little sandal, a little flip-flop, where it goes between my first toe and second toe. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take that excess behind and underneath. So now I'm standing on it. Now I've got this really sweet flip-flop, right? Okay. So this is gonna make it so that I'm not fussing with my strap the whole time. Now, this strap is long enough that I can come straight up to a standing position, that's wonderful. But most of the time, we're gonna have our students kind of down here. So gather the buoyancy, my weight is gonna, my feet are together, I'm gonna start putting my weight into that right leg. Inhale, come up to extend, pick up that foot, take that strap back behind. From here, the hands can walk down. Now notice the lower ribs might try to come forward, we're gonna keep this really contained. And then from here, I can start to walk my hands down that strap, lifting the thigh. Then the thigh can come up, and there's my pose. 
Now what I want you to notice is in that posture, I wasn't trying to extend my chest too far forward. I was going for the back bending sensation first. Now the other variation of that, I'm gonna switch legs. The other variation of that is as I, as I put my weight into my left foot, is to pick up my right hand. Now to do this, we're gonna inhale both arms up high, and then slowly exhale, hitchhike that right hand this time around. So notice my palm is facing sideways. I'm gonna pick up my right foot. Grab the inside of that foot, okay? This is a big difference between standing bow and dancer. Inside of the foot, I've got that external rotation so my shoulders can stay open, okay? So from here, find your focal point so that you don't lose your balance. Take a deep breath and then slowly inhale, lift that thigh. There's none of this out forward. That doesn't mean that that's not a style of yoga, that's just not the style of yoga that I'm teaching. We want to keep everything lifted and reaching up, okay? So from a front view, you might also notice your students kind of coming out here. We want to keep those legs, excuse me, legs tracking together as the heart lifts, hips face forward, okay? Tadasana is your foundation for this. So that's a real favorite to play with. You can always use the wall. You can have your students stand next to the wall and practice it. Or if you're not concerned about that shoulder yet, and you just wanna know what it's like to lift that leg, go for it, okay? Lots of things that you can use. Having a chair nearby is really helpful as well. So we've also got our tree pose, Vrikshasana. So find your balance into Dasana again. This is actually gonna be an open hip posture. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the hands to heart, slowly open the left leg out to the side. Now what's really important is that that knee stays open. As we move the leg up, sometimes it comes forward. We wanna keep it nice and open. So if the hips are a little tight, you can just come a little bit lower onto the leg. We're not gonna put any weight into the kneecap. Inhale, reach up high. And I like to start with my hands at heart center, reminding where we're centered. Put weight into that right leg, bring that left leg up. I can then reach down, grab hold of that foot, bring it into the inner thigh. And this is the variation that we're gonna be teaching. From here, my branches can come out, they can sway, they can move, whatever I wanna do, I can lift the heart, open it up, but really concerned about keeping that knee open. You can do both sides. Remember, we inhale, reach up, hands to heart, open, and then pick up that leg, exhale, whoops, rest into the posture. Left side is not my best side. Good. Nice and long. Now notice that hip didn't kick out. We're staying nice and elongated. Everything's strong through the spine. Crown of the head is lifted. And then to come out of the posture, I can just gently release. So that is your tree pose. We've got my dog making a cameo right now. All right, two really great balancing postures that get incorporated into a lot of classes. They can become a peak posture or just a part of your flow. Um, is warrior one, I'm sorry, warrior three and half moon. So uh, Virabhadrasana three comes from the warrior one family. So it's forward facing. So we're right here in our warrior. And we're gonna just gather all of our strength into that front leg and slowly launch the body off the floor. Now it's really easy for this hip to lift up. So really important that the toes face forward. If we can find nice buoyancy in that foundation leg, I'm gonna do left leg here. If you can find that buoyancy in that left leg, as you find warrior one, inhale, Exhale, extend, inhale, launch that foot, okay? So we want that foot facing down to the floor. Arms can really go anywhere. If you find your students kind of rounding the shoulders, let the hands come back into airplane. The other thing with this posture is I think we're taught that, that this pose, like all the way forward, is the only way to do this posture, and that's not true. So another variation to get into the pose is just simply warrior one, come up to balance. And this might be a better way to balance for some of your older students, newer students, anybody that's pregnant that's still dealing with balance issues, center of gravity's changing. So as long as they're finding that balance and the toes are facing the floor and they're not out here, hips stay closed, okay? So you can look through your book and learn a little bit more cueing on that one, but lots of fun places that you could go in and out of from there. Now kind of the equivalent from the Warrior Two perspective and family, is Ardhachandrasana or half moon. So you can have a block nearby if you want it. The block is gonna be further forward than the foot. And that's probably the biggest mistake that I see with teachers and students is not giving that cue so they set that block down right next to the foot. So we're gonna come into warrior two. I'm gonna be on my right leg bent. 
okay? Inhale up high and long. Now, I'm gonna just place my left hand on that back hip so that I don't even have to worry about it because it's out of sight, out of mind, right? It's also gonna help me keep that shoulder back. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and slowly extend as if I'm moving into extended side angle. So remember, inhale, exhale, right? Hand to the floor to my block, and then slowly open up. Now notice my toes are really flexed and full, and my hip is not facing down, it's facing forward. Once I get my balance here, I can extend that hand to the sky. You can make it a little trickier by lifting that hand up and away from the floor. So you can come back out of the pose into warrior two, getting back to your foundation, or you can move in a variety of different ways. So there's been that conversation. We had that in triangle pose as to where that foot is facing. So that foundation foot, we've always been told that the foot needs to face forward. I believe the first time I heard it was Sadie Nardini talking about anatomy and alignment and what, what pressure's going on in that knee. So I want you to pay special attention to when you come up into the pose as you inhale and launch, right? My foot's facing you guys. Now, if you felt your weight shift and your foot start to turn this direction, I want you to ask yourself if it's because of balance or if it's because of my anatomy. Okay, so if it's because of balance, because maybe you rolled into the outer edge of that foot, then there's some work that we can do. We can work into that big toe mound a little bit more, just like you do in Tadasana. Or you might pay attention and say, you know what? This is not comfortable on my knee here. And if this isn't comfortable on my knee, then I'm probably creating some sort of damage. Or if it doesn't feel good, and there's, of course, a difference between discomfort and pain. We want to go into discomfort in yoga, not the pain. So pay attention to how your knee feels when you get into this. We'll talk a little bit more about it in our anatomy module. But if you can do a little bit of research on the pros and cons of keep keeping that foot forward rather than letting it turn a little bit, just make sure that the weight is in all four quarters of the feet when you are lifted. We're creating that long top line and then that extended leg is very, very much active. We don't want the toes pointed, we want them flexed as if you're trying to kind of scratch the roof of your own mouth. So moving on to more balances, we're gonna come down low. Um, we've got boat pose, Navasana, and we don't often think of boat pose as a balance, but it is, we're balancing on our sit bones. So we've got Ardha Navasana and our full boat, our Navasana pose. So we're gonna go ahead and come down here. Great, great pose for core strength building. Dandasana is gonna be our foundation for it. So we're moving from this position, finding those sit bones into the mat. I'm gonna gather my knees in and then start to find that balance on the sit bones, okay? So the feet can be down low, you can have one foot down, whatever feels good. You can extend higher if you want. I'm gonna find that happy medium right here where my legs are parallel to the floor. Now it's really easy to round here. So keep the chin lifted, keep the heart open. You can use the knees, the back of the knees as leverage to get you up here. Now this is Ardha Navasana. This is probably the most taught variation of the posture. And Ardha Navasana isn't because my knees are straight or bent. It's actually because I'm in my halfway point of the posture, okay? To come into full boat, I've got two variations. It's more like a little Pilates move. I'm either here or arms overhead. As you exhale, we draw up. Oops, I'm going to find my balance. Inhale, open, yawn the body. Exhale, close. So if you're wanting to teach more of a power class, you can move dynamically through full boat and half boat. And just inhale, elongate. Exhale, and close the body into that half boat pose. So there's some fun stuff you can do with it. We're balanced on the sit bones. Low back is pushing forward. Really important that we keep that spine long. As you find your students starting to round here, pay very special attention because that just means they don't have the core strength. So as the instructor, invite your own legs to come lower because your students are gonna do exactly what you're doing. And if you're trying to take the full variation of the pose and your students see it and they wanna do it, they start to round and round and round and round. And then they lose that whole point of the pose, right? And the whole point of the practice. It's not a comparison model. It's to get them deeper into their own practice. So we also have crow in our, um, and this is our only up level posture for two hundred hour. And this is just meant to be um, just kind of a fun one. A lot of people always want to learn how to get into it. It's really not taught a lot in class. So I'm going to walk through it and teach it to you. Remember, I have the shoulder issues, so I'm going to be real careful. You can always, always, always use a block 
to lift up your center of gravity and be a little bit higher. So we're in kind of a variation of Malasana here. I'm probably not gonna use the block today. And you can come to one of my classes or maybe I'll put one online of a full crow practice. So I'm in a Malasana variation. You can always start here if you want to. Notice it's Tadasana, that's my actual starting point. Then I move through Malasana, okay, just for this variation. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. I'm gonna heel toe my feet in a little bit, and I'm gonna draw a triangle with my body. So my hands are the bottom of the triangle, and my eye line is gonna be that third point on the triangle. My arms are gonna get really strong. I'm gonna walk the knees to the back of my arms, okay? So as I take an exhale, I'm gonna slowly start to tip my body forward, keeping my eyes out in front, lifting the feet up and away. To come out of the posture, I'm just gonna gently set myself back down, lifting through the heart. So oftentimes we'll go to a class and we'll just hear a teacher say, if crow's in your practice, go ahead and take that. And I want you to really be aware of the inability for most students to get into the posture and the frustration of finding your way there. So allowing them to use that block, lifting them up, they're actually dropping down into the pose and not fighting gravity as much. So you might offer that and you might even just get their stu your students right here. Right? So one of the main things you're gonna look for is whether or not their eyes are looking between the hands. If they are, they're gonna topple forward and they're not really in that full integrity of the pose. So just, um, we wanna think about it is with our, and just, and with our balances, any kind of balance, um, when we build a tripod, we have a lot more freedom and movement in the pose and we've create, created boundaries. So. If you think about a straight line, it's not going to be very sturdy and strong because somebody can just push you over. But if you create a triangle, right, you've got three points to kind of wobble from. And that's essentially what we're doing with our eye line is one of the points in this posture. So that is going to be it, I believe, for our balancing postures. And we're going to move into our inversions. Now, I've mentioned that I have um, a neck injury and a, um, a shoulder injury going on right now. So I'm not going to be teaching the handstand or headstand. You can go to my YouTube, um, and, uh, scroll through YouTube here and find that handstand practice and play with that. Also, Namaste and Rose, we have a practice mode of getting into a headstand. So I encourage you to go listen to those, practice those, and, and do those as part of your journey today. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into the final uh, three postures. These can all be very wonderful poses for either the beginning or the end. They can be your peak pose. They can be part of your practice. I use uh, one of them, legs up the wall and restorative all the time. So we're gonna actually start with shoulder stands. And I want you to recognize that props are always a good thing. You can always use the wall to help lift people up off of their mat. But we're gonna go ahead and um, find a blanket. And I'm gonna show you where you're gonna place that blanket if you choose to do it. Now, using a blanket in um, any of these postures is not necessary. Sometimes it's good for the neck and the shoulders. Essentially, we want that blanket when it's on the mat. We want it resting right about here on your students. Sometimes the blanket's up here, sometimes it's way down here, and it's not gonna be helpful. We want it to be right at the shoulders, and you would just have them lower down onto their mat, finding their way with the shoulders here. And you can pat it up as high as you want, to help alleviate that. Now you don't need it, I'm just offering that as a suggestion. A block can come in handy nearby as well because those that can't comfortably use those abdominals and low back strength to get off the floor, this is gonna give them the same sensation by placing it under the sacrum. It also might be the lift that they need to actually come off the floor, okay? Really important that when we're in any of these poses that we don't look left or right because we're gonna put strain in the neck and the shoulders. So we wanna be really, really careful of that. So I'm gonna get this out of my way just because I haven't been practicing with the blanket underneath me lately and I'm okay with it, but I want you to try it at home. Take a couple of padding, a uh, couple of layers of blankets for padding. See what it feels like because you wanna know what your students are experiencing. So from, we're gonna move right into shoulder stand. We're gonna move from shoulder stand right into plow, which is our next pose. I'm not gonna be looking at you. I'm gonna try really hard not to look at you because I wanna make sure that I keep my neck in alignment, spine stays long. Pushing my low back to the floor as if I were gonna go into bridge pose, working my hands underneath me just a little bit. My, my thumbs are under my booty, my elbows are squeezed into the ribs. Using the abdominal strength, I'm gonna slowly 
go ahead and take a deep breath in and then press my hips up, hands to the low back. Okay, walking my elbows in just a little bit more and I'm coming to balance with my legs up and overhead. Okay, you can walk up as high as you need to in the low back and take a couple of breaths here. Your students can also go ahead and play a little bit, variations of the feet. We can do a candlestick variation right here, or we can elevate nice and high. So we're closing up the thyroid, so try to keep the chin away from the chest as much as possible. And then as you exhale the next breath, feet can come up and overhead, hands can come to the floor, stay in the low back, moving into plow pose. Deaf man's pose is another one that's a variation here. Now your feet do not have to be on the floor. They can be out here. That's totally acceptable and fine. When you're ready to come out of the posture, hands to the low back for support if you need it. And round down one vertebrae at a time using your abdominal strength. And gently inhale lower all the way to the floor. So that was our shoulder stand into our plow pose. And then our final posture today is going to be a really great one. And I'm going to invite you to just stay there for the rest of the time. You can come out of it whenever you're ready. We're going to end our practice here today as you're learning all these 200-hour um, asanas. But I'm going to move towards the wall so you'll still be able to see me. We're going to do a simple pose that I like to use in restorative a lot. And it's just legs up the wall posture. So the easiest way to get into it is to actually get your hips and your shoulders as close to the wall as possible. I know I'm at the edge of my um, image here. And we're gonna slowly roll onto the back and walk our booty towards the wall if it came away, okay? So arms can be out to cactus, they can be out to T position, face down, they can be up and overhead. And here we can actually play at the wall. We can go ahead and lower those legs down. We can come into Baddha Konasana with the knees, with the feet wide, and just, it takes a little pressure off the low back. You can use that blanket as well and prop it up underneath you. This is also a good way to start to work into that shoulder stand here as well. So lots of things you can use the wall as a prop for, but ending in Shavasana like this, it reverses the blood flow a little bit and we are able to completely relax. So I invite you to stay here, close your eyes, turn your palms face up as if you were in Shavasana. Close your eyes and just take a couple of moments, a couple of deep breaths. And I just want to thank you so much for coming and practicing with me today and learning a little bit about a few of our methods for getting students comfortable and safe in this very quick tutorial. This is by no means a way to um, completely teach a class. I didn't give you all the proper cueing. I want you to learn that on your own. But this is just a generalization of how to start moving people into asana. So I thank you so much for playing with us today, and I can't wait to see you in class soon. Namaste.